Okay. Hey, we're here at Graphic Policy. We're talking to David Pepos about Punisher number one out this week. That is a reintroduction to the classic character, but also an update to the classic character. So uh, kicking it off, like for you, describe this new series for those who uh, might know the Punisher, but might not know the direction you're going for. Yeah, uh, our brand new Punisher series, it's introducing a brand new legacy character by the name of Joe Garrison, who is a former S.H.I.E.L.D. Wetworks agent who retired to pursue the call of family. Unfortunately for Joe, somebody just blew up his house with his family still inside of it. And the authorities believe that the husband is the prime suspect. So uh, Joe has to use his uh, arsenal of S.H.I.E.L.D. weaponry and his gun foo skills uh, to find out who set him up and why. And over the course of this journey, uh, winds up uh, coming around to using the Punisher name. So, uh, yeah, I've built this story as uh, uh, John Wick beats the fugitive. Uh, it's been a really fun way of kind of, uh, you know, introducing a brand new version of the Punisher, uh, but one that still feels kind of core to the concept. Uh, it, you know, I've likened it to, um, you know, Danny Ketch and, and, and Johnny Plays as ghostwriters, or even the way that Robbie Ray's kind of pivoted the uh, Ghost Rider mythology from motorcycles to muscle cars. We're doing the same thing uh, in terms of leaning into the John Wick gun foo style uh, of, of action and adventure. So it's been a really fun time uh, working on this series. And uh, honestly, the response, I couldn't be happier with it. Uh, you know, I know a lot of people were very trepidatious going in, thinking we were going to make a, a huge departure from uh, the, the, the core ethos of what's made the Punisher endure for 50 years. But um, if anything, I've, I've really described this book as what, walking the tightrope of figuring out how do we introduce new concepts, but still remain true to what's come before. What was your, I mean, as you said, Punisher has been around for 50 years. What was your introduction to the character? Boy, uh, my first introduction to the Punisher was probably in the Amazing Spider-Man uh, uh, round robin arc, uh, where it's uh, Spider-Man, Punisher, Nova, Moon Knight, and Night Thrasher. Uh, dealing with uh, Jeff Wilde, uh, uh, the cyborg Midnight, uh, and the Secret Empire. So uh, that was, a, a, I think, like a five or six part series. I know uh, Frank got taken out fairly early on uh, by a group of amazing villains whose names are escaping me. Um, but he 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 kind of uh, he was resting up in, in Moon Knight's moon copter for a while and then uh, came back with a vengeance. So, um, and then, yeah, you know, I, I revisited the character a lot uh, as an adult, um, you know, uh, Rick Remender's run on Punisher yeah. uh, was kind of uh, my coming of age. I had just started as a reviewer in, in the comics journalism scene when that came out. And so I loved reading that series and that was a big influence on what we're doing today. Uh, Greg Rucka's run on Punisher is fantastic. Um, you know, I, I really enjoyed what uh, Matt Rosenberg did uh, with, especially with uh, his War Machine storyline um and then also you know going back to the classics um you know of course garth ennis you know i mean it, that really is uh, uh very much a, a pinnacle of, of storytelling for for the punisher um the stephen grant original miniseries uh, which i had a chance to revisit as i was building up this series um and uh also um you know jason aaron uh jason aaron's max run and then of course i i read as much of what was going on for um for his most recent run as, as, as I was aware of uh, that was available to me to read. And so, yeah, um, you know, the Punisher in a lot of ways, he reminds me of Daredevil and and not in the sense that they're both the street level characters, but in the fact that they're both create uh, characters that really, they tend to draw some really excellent work from the creators that are, that are tackling him. Um, he is a character that is, that is kind of a Rorschach test. Um, and, and I, I think that is the case when you're writing licensed IP in general, but I think, for the Punisher in particular, because his story is so primal and 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 so controversial on its face, that I think everybody has a very different take on the character, and so that was uh, something that we were really trying to take into mind: is that just like every creator has his own opinion on the Punisher, um, there are a wide number of constituencies that have very strong opinions on what makes a good Punisher story. Should the Punisher exist? Um, and, you know, what are the pros and cons of the character? And for us, it was really trying to take the best parts of all of these different constituencies and try to figure out a way that we could build a bigger table to house as many of them as we could. So it's an interesting character. I mean, the roots are kind of that 70s exploitation revenge yeah. stories. 
Uh, and the characters like evolved over the years and kind of hinted it or talked about it briefly, or at least I brought it up before yeah. we start chatting. Um, I mean, the character really has evolved in interesting directions. We'll go with yes. that. <laughs> <laughs> um, at, like at its core, who is the Punisher to you? Like, what is that like basic DNA? It's a great question. I mean, for me, it, it, it's... You know, I, for me, I, I prefer having the Punisher be, you know, a flesh and blood man, a flesh and blood human who they're really defined by their tenacity and their attitude, the, the badassness and the grittiness. You know, they've got their arsenal of weaponry and their and their combat skills. And really, it's about just their relentlessness. You know, they, they see the bad guy and they're going to do whatever it takes to take the bad guy out, even if that means taking a bunch of hits along the way. And so I, I think. For me, the the thing that I've wanted to do with uh, with Joe Garrison, um, it, you know, so much of our origin story for Joe is how does he come to use this name? Um, you know, I know a lot of people have have said like, oh, well, you know, he's he's got a dead family the same way that Frank Castle does, and I think that's kind of a core staple to being a Punisher. I mean, you can say you can make the same argument about Jake Gallows and Rachel Cole Alves as well, and I I, I think that's similar to being like a member of the Batman family. You know, you, you most people don't wear a bat in their chest unless they have a dead parent, you know. Yeah. Um, and so I, I think for me, though, it's it was, OK, how do we take these kind of core beginnings and then twist them? Um, so in the case of Joe, uh, you know, he has a dead family, but the, the cops all think he did it. And so he's on the run trying to, you know, trying to figure out who did it and maybe see if he can clear his own name. Um, but also, I think a core distinction is that uh, Joe, minor spoilers, He's not out there calling himself the Punisher. If anything, it's actually um, that's a that's a role that's being thrust upon him by circumstance. Uh, thanks to his shield, ballistic armor, it, and and his uh, his tactical gear, it winds up looking just enough like a skull that a bystander then tells the media, I, I, "You know, I just uh, saw this the the Punisher, or I just saw this guy uh, fight through a, a horde of the Inner Demon Gang, and I think he had a skull in his chest." And then suddenly the media runs with it and says, oh, is there a new Punisher on the loose? And um, that's going to be a, a theme that we keep revisiting across Joe's origin um, is that everybody's calling him the Punisher. And he's he says, you know, it's all misdirection. I don't care what direction they're looking in. Uh, if as, as long as, it, if, if it's helping me get the job done uh, and, uh, in terms of finding out why my family died, I, I'm, I'm okay with that. Um, but that's going to evolve over I this it's an interesting part in that first issue is like when that scene comes up and the guy's like, you know, hey, he had the skull in the chest and they're like, hey, is the Punisher back? Yeah, I think it, it cuts to Garrison at that point who's like looking at the the ballistic yeah. armor and you can kind of get like he comes off as exacerbated about it. By yeah. Like, yeah, he's like, he's like, oh, geez, like, like, I think I think there is a part of him that doesn't fully accept in the moment that, oh, I may have stepped in something a little bigger than I than myself. And that is something that 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 he will keep revisiting over the course of this arc. Um, you know, it, it, for me, it's it's kind of um, how does one man's personal mission of revenge turn into something a little bit more wide ranging and self sustaining? And uh, for me, though, my ultimate goal with, with the character, and this is kind of my 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 twist on the Punisher's War, is um, you know when the Punisher first got started, you know, I mean, it was very street level um, and it was very much a, a conversation about crime and due process. And, and, and uh, in it back then it was sort of, Oh, are, are the laws hands tied based on, on, on due process. And then it sort of has morphed into something bigger and more over the top kind of culminating in, in the Garth Ennis run, um, you know, which, which even he is described as, as almost cartoonish in, 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 a, in a way. Um, but for me, I, I really wanted to kind of, bring things back to, you know, back to, back to the human level. And so as I was thinking about it, the conversation today is, uh, and it, you know, it really kind of crystallized with me. I had a conversation with a Punisher fan uh, at a con. Uh, the guy had a Punisher hat, Punisher t-shirt, a Punisher coffee cup. He had the whole ensemble. And when I was talking with him, um, he seemed very trepidatious of, of a new Punisher, very protective of, of the original character. And I asked him, do you ever feel like the system is just rigged against the little guy? You know, you think about it, uh, you know, our politicians, our law enforcement, the, all the all the corporations, the way that laws are or are not enforced. Um, 
everything the deck the deck feels stacked um you know against just the the, the people on the street and there are people falling through the cracks every single day there's no social safety net it's just in ruptures and for me i thought you know what if we could have a punisher for the little guy you know uh, uh, the people's punisher if the law can't help you maybe this is the guy that can help you settle the score and so that's my ultimate goal with this character is to have somebody who's able to have all the core traits of a punisher all that uh, the, the action and and attitude that have made the character endure for half a century but kind of just take it at a slightly different angle one that is always about punching up and always about helping the little guy and i think that was something that that my editor tom braywart and i really were in sync on with that and i think that helps distinguish joe from frank and i think the way we're able to do that is with a clean start i know people have asked why do a new punisher like this and i i think if anything, the core difference is when you first meet Frank Castle in America, in, in Amazing Spider-Man 129, he's already the Punisher. He's already made this decision. It's, it's pretty clear, even just from what little he's talked about, he, he has a body count. You know, he's he's been he's been hunting criminals for for a little while already. Whereas watching somebody like Joe, who's pretty fresh at this, he hasn't marinated in this in his pain for very long. He certainly hasn't made the decision to become a Punisher yet. Um, this is this is a great starting point and this is a great way for us to to take any sort of controversy or heat or baggage that may be associated with the character and i know that there are, are some contingents of fandom who who rankle at that but as a professional i can't ignore that it exists uh, what i can do is kind of pivot and sidestep around it so that this new character can avoid all that unnecessary uh, controversy and so for me michael I know a lot of people thought, is this going to be a political punch, counterpunch, counterpunch, counterpunch? And there are some books that that works for, but I think with a with a book that's already this charged, for me, our goal is to really kind of bring down the temperature in the room. Um, and and I thought in this case, doing something that's that plays the character straight, but makes some subtle but important distinctions, I, I, we really thought that that was the way to go for it. I mean, it sounds like you're kind of describing almost like Punisher meets A Team in some ways. Like, yeah, or the Equalizer. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, 100%. like it's got that that vibe. And then the other I think is interesting is that you know he, you talk about like fighting for the little guy and getting screwed. Like in many ways, like it also plays off that whole uh, conspiracy deep state thing going on now, and that he's screwed and that Shield doesn't exist anymore. He was an agent, you know, the cops are looking at him and at the one point was like, oh, he's an accountant, which I thought was hilarious because it's always like, oh, hey, here's this uh, undercover person. What's his job? He's an accountant. Yeah. Um, this cover story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he's ba he basically is going to be potentially screwed by the government because there's no way to prove. In yeah. Well, you know, jo Joe is definitely, uh, you know, at this point, he's a lone wolf, you know, yeah. well, our, I shouldn't say a lone wolf because he, he, he yeah. does have. Uh, one person in his corner is former shield handler triple a who kind of serves as the microchip of this story yeah i definitely uh, want to ask about that just just in terms of utility gives joe somebody to talk to and gives the <laughs> audience you know if there's any you know any super villains that drop in like we're able to kind of quickly throw in any information you need and, and not drag the story down too much um but yeah you know it's 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 one of those things that Joe is not sanctioned by anybody. He's certainly not working for the government. If anything, by virtue of having the police trying to hunt him down, uh, they're certainly not aware of his background. Um, but by that, I, you know, I, I, I know there was trepidation from some corners of people saying, oh, you know, is he a Fed? Is he affiliated with the government? And that was something I, I, I also wanted to, 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 to account for in this new character's. Uh, Frank Castle, very canonically, uh, you know, a Marine, you know, uh, uh, tough as nails, a uh, soldier on the battlefield. And there were a couple of reasons why we wanted to take this more elevated approach. Um, you know, first and foremost, um, you know, when you're introducing a new Punisher, um, invariably, they're going to it's going to turn into a pissing contest. Um, you know, people are going to say, well, compare this to Frank, you know. Um, you know, is he tough enough to go toe to toe with Frank? Uh, is his tragedy serious enough to go toe to toe with Frank? Um, you know, what about his background? You know, and so rather than, you know, obviously we didn't want to do the, the, the Marine thing again. Um, but if you try to use any other real world branch of the military, it's going to turn into the exact same, you know, exact same thing. 
by using something like shield, it's elevated. There's really no disputing one way or the other. Like, could this guy go toe to toe with somebody like Frank Castle? Um, and then also, of course, there are real world concerns about actual law enforcement and military co-opting that symbol. And, you know, I I, I think why I, I understand that there are a lot of people in, in the armed forces and, 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 and law enforcement who, who uh, admire the Punisher as a character. That is still a symbol of extrajudicial vigilantism. And when you're seeing that symbol on uh, uh, figures of authority who are supposed to be upholding and enforcing the law, yeah, it does make your hair stand on end a little bit. And so uh, by having kind of the, 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 the shield element, we're really able to find a, a nice way of distinguishing Joe from people like uh, from from Frank Castle or Rachel Cole Alvis, um, but also in a way that we're kind of able to have our cake and eat it, too. You know, it's not saying that, like, you know, Joe, for example, doesn't use firearms. Um, you know, uh, if anything, we're able to elevate those firearms and let them do all sorts of cool things that normal guns can't. Yep. Um, but you know what? If that also means that nobody's going to walk into a Walmart and think that they can walk out as the Punisher, that's also a very e a great extra benefit, at least, you know, in the year 2023, in terms of me being a writer who can sleep at night. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you know, I think uh, having that S.H.I.E.L.D. background and having the fact that he's a former S.H.I.E.L.D. guy, you know, he retired. Uh, you know, I know there have been some people who have sort of tried to pull maybe gotcha points uh, by saying, oh, well, what about Secret Empire? And, you know, what happened to S.H.I.E.L.D. at the end of Secret Empire? And my my thinking is based on the, the age just have chose children um he retired well before the events of secret empire um uh, you know because he wanted to start that family uh mm -hmm. and it just so happens that you know uh he thought things could stay buried and they are not distinctly d d definitely not buried and so like john wick he's kind of forced back into action and um yeah the the mission the mission parameters they're definitely going to change uh, a lot over the course of his origin story so that was a, you kind of uh, brought up something I wanted to ask about was the, the thing that stood out to me visually is the weapons he using he uses are over the top. I mean, there's these high tech. I mean, there's one that like just forms in his hand yep. and kind of pulls the rail gun. Out. Yeah. Yeah. The rail gun. Um, and it's one of those that stood out. I was like, all right, this seems smart in that they're not using real guns in one. And because, you know, I, I think some guns, you actually have to get permission to do images and stuff like that. But um, the other is like, you're disassociating it with the real world in some ways and, and it feels a bit more fantastical and yeah. you know as you said like there's not that just slight where you're just like that slight unease yeah in, like, well you know endorsement in a way you know part of it was um you know i, I always go back to rick remender's uh punisher run uh particularly i love that dark rain uh opening arc uh, that he did with jerome opena i think that's probably some of my favorite punisher material to date and a core element of that arc was that frank finds like a like a stockpile of like superhero and supervillain weapons yeah. and that was really cool and that let rick remender do some like cool stuff with the character but i thought you know one way to take that an extra step further we do the shield tech and so that way we're able to have all these kind of cool unpredictable little twists thrown in there but they'll, they're all organic to joe it is it's sort of like um, similar to like, you no know, Batman um, and his utility belt and all the tech. But in this case, we can do anything. Um, you know, I, I'd been wanting for years to write a shield series. I'd, I'd love to, to write Nick Fury. And I I did. I got to write him a little bit in Avengers Unlimited. Um, so I was able when they asked me, hey, like, we want you to do a new Punisher series. Um, I was like, oh, I'm kind of able to take a lot of those ideas that I had and kind of put it maybe a little bit more of a brutal twist on them. Uh, you know, it's it's sort of um, we're walking the tightrope here in terms of Frank. I, I always saw him as a wrecking ball, um, whereas Joe, I see him as, as as almost like a surgeon. You know, it, it really is. It's the gun foo of it all. And I know um, Marvel hates it when I do this, but I always want to be honest in, in, in interviews. Um, you know, when I when I was describing, you know, my thoughts for Joe, I thought about uh, Cassandra Cain um, to, to, to Frank Castle's Bruce Wayne. You know, Batman is kind of an all rounder. You know, he's he's a detective. He knows how to fight. He's got all the gadgets. Uh, Cassandra is the fight girl. You know, you put her in a, in a room full of bad guys and you're just going to watch her go to work. And that's something I wanted to do for Joe is that that way, you know, he's got his fantastical shield weaponry, which lets him do so many cool things. But 
ultimately it doesn't really matter what hardware he's using it's how he uses it yeah. and the choreography of it all and and in particular the way he uses his environment uh to to his advantage i mean i i pitched it as you can throw joe into a restaurant an office building uh you know a machine plant you can throw him uh you know down in the kingdom of atlantis if you wanted to and half the fun is going to be how does joe use that setting to put some people on the ground uh, and so, it, it, you know, that's something that um, Dave Wachter, who I, I haven't talked about yet, but uh, he has really leaned into that in a really nice way. Um, Dave is the real deal. And uh, I, I would say that any success that we have for this Punisher series is because Dave really understands the assignment. Uh, he and I talked about Cassandra Kane, um, uh, the Damien Scott uh, art on Batgirl, as well as Scott McDaniel on Nightwing. And he's really taken that to heart and really developed a nice visual vocabulary for Joe that kind of sets him apart from any Punishers that have come before. And I I want to talk about that a little bit. It's interesting is like the, and I, I used it in my review and, and I, I think you knew what I was going for is like the, the, the comic feels very old school back in the day, original Punisher and yeah. very grounded again. Yeah. Um, like even though the action's over the top, the, you know, he fights a, an actual super villain. Yeah. Uh, you know, the weapons are, there's still something about it that it gets away from that. Um, almost i mean punisher to me towards the end almost became more superhero than his original origin right like right there's just elements to it where you're like hey you're more in line with all the other marvel characters than being what you were with the star but this feels like it's back to that and visually that seemed that i think that really comes through as yeah well, well like, thank you for saying that uh, uh yeah dave uh you know dave wachter is such a, an incredible talent uh you know it's funny uh, he had not been on my radar uh, before we started working together. You know, I I was aware of his work from like Ninja Turtles and uh, I, knew, I knew he was on Planet of the Apes. And at the time I was thinking the anthropomorphic guy, like I don't understand. And then I saw, then pages started coming in and I said, oh, okay. This is why I like Tom Braveheart is where he is right now is that like he really cast this book very well uh, with, with the art team. The pages came in uh, for those who have worked with me before um, I tend to have, I, I, it's always a conversation. You know, I tend to talk with, with my artists a lot, uh, particularly in the layout stage of just how do we pace something visually and, you know, which moment should get, kind of get the, the the meat of the page and uh, what things do I need to kind of trim down uh, on the script side of things. Uh, for Dave, I didn't really need to have that conversation uh, almost at all. I mean, really, it's just he would turn in uh, layouts and my jaw would be on the ground. I'd be like, okay, this looks great. Uh, not really anything, you know, can you make no, this no. Panel a little taller? Like that's kind of, you know, the, the, the extent of it. Um, he's a real professional. He draws like a machine. Um, I can tell you every issue of Punisher looks better than the one that came before it. Um, he just, he's working on issue four right now. He just sent us all the layouts for that uh, earlier this week. And um, yeah, we're just like, yeah, this, this looks great. And I know, um, Tom, who's not always an, an easy guy to impress, um, he has been uh, downright effusive uh, about these pages. And so, yeah, Dave is just, um, he's a 20-year veteran, um, you know, and he's, he's hes Eisner and Harvey nominated, and it shows. I think he really uh, is a perfectionist. He cares a lot about what this book looks like. And I know he and I, we met at New York Comic Con uh, for the first time, and we were talking a little bit like, we both came to this project with a degree of trepidation, you know, I mean, nobody has legacy Punisher on the bingo card and we, we, we all read newspapers. We know that there, that that's a controversial character and that there are a lot of opinions in, in both directions as to why that is. And we thought, well, you know, this deserves a shot. This, we, we want to handle this as, as, uh, responsibly and and when i say responsibly i mean both to the readership at large but also to the character itself um you know we we want to this is not something you can just do willy-nilly this is not something you can phone in um this is something you have to do tackle really deliberately and um it was really heartening to hear that dave had sort of the same exact same th thought process um you know when he was approached to do this series and it really took it took some conversations with him and tom where tom was explaining to him what i had in mind and how i was going to distinguish this character that dave was like okay yeah that sounds like fun that sounds like something I, i'd feel good and comfortable tackling um but yeah he he's, he's such a professional and and he really pushes uh he pushes me he pushes uh, our colorist dan brown 
Um, we really all push each other to kind of uh, uh, turn in our, our, our A game here. And uh, yeah, just just wait. Um, you know, like Dave really is going to put the, the the Punisher through his paces and uh, all the action looks absolutely spectacular. So the other visually I thought was kind of cool. So, so you described that, you know, it's you know, partially a fugitive that you got these two detectives, you know, trying to figure out if Gar- or thinks that Garrison is the the murderer of his family. Yeah. Um, the vibe I got off of that visually, it, for some reason, it kept on coming to like seven for me. Yeah. Yeah. That was definitely, that was definitely, uh, you know, it's funny. I think that I was thinking about seven uh, when I was writing it. Right. Uh, and I may have actually, I may have mentioned in the script, I'll have to look it up, but um uh, I, I think I think Dave had the same kind of uh, of wavelength is that, um, you know, we'll be seeing more of Linus and Ward um, over this series, particularly in issue three. Um, you know, that's sort of where uh, uh, their 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 kind of their issues with Joe really kind of come to a head uh, in, in issue three. Um, and, yeah, you know, it's one of those things like we we wanted to have them to just kind of keep reminding everybody that there are external pressures here that like Joe, while he's a trained agent, like everybody's still looking for him. I mean, the, the fact that this suburban house was blown up and the husband's not there. Um, it's kind of an atrocious looking crime. Yep. Uh, and particularly, you know, these, these two detectives, you know, one of them has a family of his own um, and, 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 you know, the other one just has something to prove. And so they're both kind of like, all right, like this, this, this Joe Garrison guy, like the fact that he's been on the, that he's been on the run for this long, like something smells. Um, and it, 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 they'll, they'll quickly kind of figure out like, oh, something's a little different here, but they still are like, we need to bring this guy in. We need to find out what the hell happened. And um, that was, I think a, a lot of the conversation that I wanted to have about like, yeah, what's the Punisher's relationship with, with, with actual law enforcement, you know, I mean, the Punisher is really kind of something that stands outside the system. And, you know, it would be so easy to be like, oh, and then he teams up with a bunch of cops, you know, or and it's like, no, like I like I I read a newspaper, you know, that's not something that's not something I'm particularly interested in, in writing. Um, you know, I think if anything, it's just sort of like, all right, you know, um, how does he leave things? you know, with, 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 with the police, uh, without anybody having any, any, without anybody crossing any moral lines that, uh, they, they can't walk away from. So, um, yeah, Linus and Ward, they're, they're, they're a fun bunch. And, um, uh, uh, yeah, we see a little bit of them, uh, again, in issue two, but issue three is where, um, uh, they'll, they'll really issue three and four, they'll have some, some, some really nice moments. As long as you don't have them at the, uh, the end of a water tube having to jump off of, a yeah. Uh, <laughs> whatever yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, not, a, not, not, none of that. But uh, uh, is, yeah, issue three. Uh, they're they're gonna find themselves drawn into the Punisher's world a little bit more than they'd like. Makes sense. Uh, the other thing is you introduce this character, Triple A. Uh, yeah, his microchip. Yeah. Uh, you know how important to you? And you know, you brought, said before it was like it gave him someone to talk to. It gave someone to give yeah. like a little bit of background. But how important was it to? give him someone to talk to. I mean, it, it yeah. really does change the character a little bit from this. Well, you know, unsociable it, murderer to like having at least some personality and in, in interaction. Right. Like, yeah, um, I, you know, well, first off, uh, I, triple A is actually one of my favorite characters to write. Um, Cause Joe is, is, is very stoic, uh, you know, by nature. I mean, I, I don't think most, most punishers, you know, uh, are not exactly known for being like big, expressive, emotional types. But I had always thought, you know, like Frank is is Frank is fire, you know, and I wanted this guy to be ice, like just really, you know, like he this guy, you know, he's still in in wet works mode, you know, so he's trying to be as dispassionate as he can be. Although you're going to see that some of that's going to slip a little bit as as things progress. But um, yeah, you know, triple A, on the other hand, like she's probably like the most expressive character I get to write in the series. Um, and that's not saying that she's like wild and zany, but just like, you know, she has a little bit of a sense of humor that we we throw in there. Um, she's got some nice personality. Um, and yeah, also just, I like her because she's really Joe's last human connection. You're right. Um, you know, and, and, uh, and unlike say a character like microchip or, 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 or Henry, uh, you know, the son of jigsaw, um, you know, those relationships, they always felt very transactional to me. 
And and so when I was reading them uh, in 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 the original Frank Castle series, uh, you know, I'll be honest, they felt a little like a drag to me. You know, like it 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 made me like Frank less because yeah, I don't you remember know, was, Microchip being like very yeah, questionable. like he was just yeah. a weird guy. Well, you know, it didn't help that they like drew him like the comic shop guy from The Simpsons, yeah. but like you know, it, it's also just like you know, you're watching Frank like be a dick to like these guys who are like helping him out and like, you know, saving him in the line of duty. And so just, that was my initial gut read when I was a kid, you know, reading those stories was, I was like, Oh, that makes me like, you know, Frank Castle even less. Um, uh, and so I, I, I like the idea of like, you know, the, the woman in the chair, like that's, that's, that's your, your backup, you know, that you like, and it's not to say that like Joe needs to be like, you're my best friend, triple a, but the fact that like there is affection there, they they really do care for each other um that that you know i think that also kind of keeps joe from falling into like a nihilistic black hole that sort of keeps him like right on the razor's edge is that like triple a is always there to watch his back triple a is sort of uh you know uh, uh uh the 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 angel on his shoulder uh but also just the one who's like able to kind of get him through whatever tough squeeze that he needs to to that he, that he's in um, so, you know, it's sort of it's like Ned Leeds in uh, in the Spider-Man movies meets Q from from the Bond films that okay. she's also able to be like, hey, we came up with this new weapon for you. And um, and so then we're able to kind of like really introduce that quickly and then not have any extra drag on, on the series. But um, yeah, that, that came about, you know, Triple A was kind of one of the first concepts I had, I had come up with with this series was I I, I had thought. Uh, of an idea that you know I, I was like oh that could be kind of funny is if like somebody's like uh you know uh what are you gonna do and joe says i'm calling triple a and then like suddenly like a drone shows up or something <laughs> um and i thought that was funny and then um you know as i was thinking about it i was like oh you know triple a like that's a name that's very easy to remember you know i was like oh arms and analysis like that's cool and then there's my fiance um who said uh, i think you mean aiding and abetting and I was like, oh, that's going in the book. Uh, that's that's <laughs> that's fun. Um, and that really solidified that character for me. Um, but yeah, you know, uh, it's one of those things like I didn't want uh, somebody in the field, you know, with, with, with Joe. I think, uh, you know, that is a mission that like you really kind of just want one man on the ground for. But it's also, you know, it gives Joe a, 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 a little bit of a human side. And um, Joe's relationship with AAA, you know, um, it can also be leverage. Um, and so, you know, triple a, um, she's not always going to be the woman in the chair. Um, and she will wind up kind of getting drawn into things a, a, a little bit more than she'd like, uh, as the series uh, progresses. It also, it's a really smart in, uh, use of the character in that triple a is his former handler. Yeah. So there's a work relationship there. Like yeah. it doesn't feel completely unnatural. It feels organic. And I think, yeah. it almost, you know, just throwing that in quickly, it's something that people can relate to and be like, oh, this is the person who I work with, you know, more than a coworker. They're, that's that friend coworker yeah. person. But like, you really know, his work wife in a, in a lot of yeah, ways. Work wife. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I mean, so much of this series, um, honestly, it was like, how do we boil things down into kind of the, the, the most primal, easy to relate way? Yep. Uh, you know, because like when, you know, Frank Castle's origin, it's very quick. You know, I mean, it's it's former soldier's family is gunned down and he, he vows vengeance on crime. Yep. Uh, that's the reason why the character has endured for 50 years. And so our challenge was, you know, how can we come up with a concept that's just as simple and, you know, X shield wetworks agents, uh, you know, uh, accused of his family's murder. And he has to find out who set him up and why um, that, that you can say that in a sentence, just the same way you can say uh, Frank's origin. And, um, so, yeah, you know, so much of this was very much, you know, how do we get to Occam's razor here? Um, you know, of just oh, something that's simple that we say it in one line and people are like, yep, I get it. And so, yeah, having the the, the shield handler, somebody who has a relationship with Joe. Um, yeah, it just, you know, it, it lets us kind of uh, dig into to, to, to Joe's history as much as, as we care to. Um, and yeah, just there. It also it has somebody who cares for Joe. And I think seeing somebody who cares for Joe will make us like just as a reader like Joe, you know, I mean, I think that's 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 an old storytelling trick is just how do you make somebody, you know, a character likable as you have other characters like him. And so, uh, yeah, Triple A, she 
she's a very fun character to write. And um, I, you know, she doesn't, she only shows up kind of in bits and in, in, in pieces, but I, I, I honestly feel like there are times where she, she steals this, the show uh, just in the brief uh, appearances she shows up. The, it's interesting. You also have written a previous or another Punisher with a little uh, futuristic Punisher. How, how do you see these two being similar? Like how do they differ as far as characters? Yeah. You know, well, it's it's funny. I mean, writing Jake Gallows in the pages of Savage Avengers is exactly what got me this job. Uh, you know, uh, for those who, who who aren't really familiar with how all that went, um, I, you know, I Savage Avengers was starring Conan the Barbarian, and I had offered to write Conan out at the end of our first arc when I first pitched the book and said, you know, we don't have to have him forever. And then I found out two issues in that the right situation was going to be changing uh, with Conan, and so I was going to have to use that 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 escape hatch. And so the first thing I said was, well, we're going to need a new lead for Arc 2. Um, and we're going to the far future. Let's make it 2099. I'd really like for it to be Jake Gallows. We haven't used a Punisher yet because Frank was off with the hand. Yep. And um, I know that there were, you know, there were there were some 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 valid concerns of just like, hey, like, how do we do this in a way that doesn't set off all the concerns that, that have followed the main Punisher? And um, we were able to kind of take Jake's story, this kind of RoboCop, like Judge Dredd, uh, very like you know uh, hardcore story of revenge, and we were able to kind of turn it on itself, where it really is. It's Jake. Just Jake is out to punish himself. Uh, you know that that ultimately the, the 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 you know it was Ultron that may have turned Jake's family into Deathlocks, but it was Jake that had to pull the trigger on them. Um, and so uh, Tom really appreciated the way that I handled that character, and that is the reason why he asked me to to do this. Um, but yeah, you know, I think uh, Jake in in certain ways is tragic, but I do think he is a little deranged. Um, you know, like I think you you go back to the original 2099 series, like this is a guy who was not especially well. Um, you know, he 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 jumps off of uh, off of the spaceship and says, "I don't need a jetpack. All I need is hate." Um, you know, we we are allowed to go a little bit more over the top with with a guy like that because of like the dystopian future elements of it all. Um, you know, they, they, they do share certain degrees of, of, of heightened technology, except if anything, Jake, I think we, Jake, we're able to go like real over the top, um, you know, in terms of like tracking bullets and it's very cyberpunk and, um, you know, he's, it, it, uh, cyberpunk is actually the best word to, to describe it. You know, it's, it's, it's not even, it's, it's past RoboCop and it's past Judge Dredd. You know, he's, he's, he's coming up with digital napalm to fight people in cyberspace that we're not quite that far ahead with, with, with anything with, with Joe, like, like you said, it, it does, it want, we wanted it to fit squarely where the Marvel universe is right now. Um, but yeah, having the, uh, the, the, the extra technology, but yeah, I think also just, uh, you know, Joe, Joe's a man on a mission, um, but I think his, his, his head's screwed on pretty straight. Um, he is, you know, like, of course, it, it, you know, with a Punisher, that's all relative. But uh, I, I do think like, you know, this is not a guy who, I mean, you see it in the very first issue that when it comes down between his mission of revenge and an innocent bystander, he's going to choose the bystander. Um, and I think that is a, a a core distinction that you can only really get to with a Punisher who's just starting out. Um, you know, Frank is all about the war and he's all about the target and just, you know, shit happens, uh, you know, beyond that. Um, but Joe, it, he's not there. He is not there. And so, uh, you know, the fact that his he thinks, oh, you know, my wife would 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 have wanted me to save this person. Um that's, I think, a core distinction. And I think it's because of the freshness of those deaths that he's able to have that kind of perspective. Uh, well, I've had you for a while. I kind of start wrapping up. But sure. one thing I want to talk about was interesting in that the, the first issue, you know, I said that it's grounded and yeah. you know, it, it takes things back to basics because it also takes on a supervillain, like a classic supervillain at the same time. Yeah. Was it important to get that in there? Or like, is that something you really want to do as opposed to keeping it just like fighting gangs and mobsters? Yeah, I, yeah, you know, I mean, it, it's sort of a little column A and a little column B. I mean, some of that is just where I naturally gravitate towards. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I figure, I, you know, I, if I'm playing in the Marvel Universe, I want to play with the Marvel Universe. And and so that that was certainly something, you know, and I, you know, you even see it in like Rick Remender's run. 
um, you know, uh, uh, where the, you know, it's it's same thing. It's, it's it's squarely in the Marvel universe's first target, his first issue. You know, he's targeting, he's trying to assassinate Norman Osborn, and he winds up fighting the Sentry. Um, you know, first issue that ruled. Um, also, though, you know, it was it was me talking about I wanted Joe to have a rogues gallery. You know, that's something that is sort of a long term goal of mine is to take you know uh, some pre existing. Uh, Marvel villains and 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 sort of uh, put my own kind of polish on them. You know, uh, when we talked about uh, minor spoiler, Mister Hyde uh, for our first issue, I had, I had said to Dave, "What if we did like the Guy Ritchie version of Mister Hyde?" You know, um, not like this Victorian dude, because uh, I do think that's part of the reason why the character sometimes feels very dated. But like, let's 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 do that, and that way also nobody's going to see it coming. Um, that basically Joe has to fight a Hulk essentially in his first issue. Um, but for me, Frank Castle obviously does not have much of a rogues gallery because most people do not live to fight him a second time. And so for me, something I, I wanted was first off, I wanted to stack the deck with some some super villains that like can outclass this 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 dude. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it just you know, he's 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 a flesh and blood man who just happens to have some shield tech and is is trained, but you know he's going toe to toe with people like Hyde and, and uh, we'll see Bushwhacker next issue uh, along with a few other cool villains. Uh, and so, you know, we're kind of leaning into the Batman Dick Tracy of it all. But I also thought, you know, how can we build like a rogues gallery for Joe that can come back? Um, and by that, I mean, Joe's still going to put a lot of people on the ground. I mean, he's not going to like, you know, this is not a punisher who like, you know, gets people in touch with their feelings. Um, if anything though, I think there are punishments that are worse than death. And so mm-hmm. there are, are, you know, I, there are, there are a few villain concepts that I've sent Marvel where it's kind of Dick Tracy, like where like they survive Joe, but they're pretty messed up. And then they are somehow dumb enough to come back for seconds. Um, and that's kind of my, my thinking is how can Joe put the punishment on villains and still find a way for any of them to come back, albeit and maybe scarred in horrific forms. Um, and so yeah, having Hyde was kind of like the first step for that. Is that, you know, uh Joe really, you know, punches outside of his weight class for this first issue. And um uh yeah, it's gonna be kind of a warning to any other supervillains that cross cross his path. Some of them might might survive, but others uh distinctly will not. Uh and wrapping things up, like what has been your favorite thing doing the Punisher? I mean, this is a character you really can go over the top with and yeah. you do something brand new. So what has been you the standout to you? Boy, honestly, I mean, it's 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 Dave's art. Um, you know, when you're writing a script, you never know exactly how it's gonna turn out. I mean, that's that's half the thrill, half the fear of making a comic is that you are writing a script, but ultimately it's in an artist's hands in terms of how they want to interpret it and what they want to add to it. You never know how it's going to go. Sometimes it's uh, above and beyond what you could have expected. Sometimes you're like, oh, I got to I'm going to have to pivot. I'm going to have to kind of follow the artist's lead that this isn't quite what I had imagined. But the art's on the page now. I got to follow it. Um, Dave is very much in in the former category. Um, really, every time that he is turning a page, I'm like, oh, this feels like the best possible interpretation of what I had written down. And um, he's got such a nice theatricality to to, to his pages. Um, mm-hmm. You know, he adds in all the kind of uh, uh, inserts, you know, for the combat and he does the cool strobe effects, which I love. But just um, the splash pages, he has like a fun Will Eisner kind of sensibility to him uh, in the way that all of our uh, our titles are incorporated into the art, particularly uh Issue three is a real standout. Um, I've I've shown a handful of people at conventions uh, the splash page for issue three, <laughs> and it is um, it, it, it it'll blow your hair back. It's it's fantastic. Nice. So yeah, every time I see those pages come in, and honestly, Dan Brown, I can't thank him enough. I mean, he I think it was him and maybe uh, Miko Soyan um, who did one of our variant covers. That is the reason why Joe's got it that that glowing chest piece. That's that was that was uh, an idea I did not come up with. But as I saw it, I was like, it's perfect. It's exactly what Joe needed to stand out, Um, because when we made the designs, they're all black and white. Um, And so, yeah, I think that's such a cool touch and and one that I did not know I was going to love as much as I did until even the book came out. And I saw it and I was just like, I can't believe that I didn't think of this. Um, It's just it's just spectacular. That's the that's 
the best case scenario for comics is when everybody's coming together and they're all adding something to the mix. Um, so I, I consider myself very fortunate to be working with uh, with uh, Dave and and Dan and and Tom and and Corey Petit and uh, Annalise Bisa and Martin Biro. I mean, this really is a book that's more than the sum of its parts. Um, and I, I'm just so thrilled to see. Honestly, the other thing is seeing readers who were very nervous about the book say, "Huh, I gave that a shot. And I actually dig it." And I, you know, I feel like making people begrudgingly like my work is like my superpower, um, you know, they, like liking it just against their will. Uh, but you know what, like, that's the thing is, I think everybody expected such a, a global departure from the Punisher and us for us to thumb our nose at the at the character. And my thinking is, I would never write a Punisher book if it couldn't feel like a Punisher book. And that's the thing yeah. I say in my review. It's 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 back to its roots. Like you know, there's, yeah. there's no Franken Castle. There's no part of the hand. It's no vengeance yeah. of God. Like it is Punisher as I remember it. Reading in yeah, 90s, we want 90s. <laughs> we want the new and returning fans alike. Uh, I think that, that I reject the idea that you have to write a Punisher book at the expense of any of one group or the other. I think that there is enough room at the table for all of us. And if that means I got to build a bigger table, then so be it. I will build that bigger table because I, I want everybody to join us. Cool, cool, cool. Um, all right, so wrapping up, I always like doing this is where yeah. can people find you online? What else you got yeah. that you want to pitch? Yeah, uh, so you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Blue Sky at Pepos D or David Pepos Comics on Facebook. Uh, you can subscribe to my newsletter, Pep Talks, at bit.ly slash pep news or visit my website at davidpepos.com. And yeah, um, in addition to Punisher, uh, the uh, fifth and final issue of Moon Knight City of the Dead comes out November 22nd, as is the second issue of my new horror series, The Devil That Wears My Face. So, so good. Cool. I appreciate it. And uh, look forward to reading the next issue and everything else you got going on. Thank you, man. I really appreciate it. Yep. Great talking to you. Hey, thanks for watching the previous video from Graphic Policy Television. Just by watching, you help support our site. Thank you so much. Now, if you're watching these videos, you probably care about geeky things like movies, television, comic books, toys, games, video games, you name it. You can go and subscribe right now to our YouTube channel to stay in touch and catch all the new videos, or check out our website at graphicpolicy.com. There's a nice link on this end of the video. But as always, thank you for watching. Keep on rocking and keep it geeky.